What's going on everybody? My name is Coda and welcome back to another episode on my survival world. Now if you're looking at me and you're thinking, Coda, when did you get netherite armor? To that I say, go and watch my last episode. But only after you finish watching this episode. Now also in last episode, I made the promise that today we'd be taking on an ancient city. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's episode. But I'd also like to say a huge thank you to everyone who is subscribing to the channel and coming back and watching the videos. It means a lot to me and I love seeing this channel grow and I really appreciate you all being here. But with that being said, let's get into today's episode. Now I believe one of the biggest challenges we're going to face in today's episode is managing our inventory because currently we don't have shulker boxes and the plan is to conquer as much as we can in this world before we travel to the end dimension. So that means we're gonna have to do this entire thing without the use of shulker boxes, making transport for all the items and all the loot that we find extremely difficult in the ancient city. So I think what the plan is, we're going to set up a linked network of nether portals between here and the ancient city once we do find one. And that's another issue. I have no clue where an ancient city is going to be. I have a few ideas of where potentially there could be some, but for sure I have no clue. So once we actually find an ancient city, we'll set up a nether portal and we'll dig a tunnel in the nether and hopefully that'll make it easier to travel back and forth between here and the ancient city if we do end up having too much for loot. But now another possibility is we just leave everything there and come back and get it later, which will work, but I don't know if I want to do that. But in all honesty, the only thing we're going there for is to say we've done it, A, and to get swift sneak on our pants. So the way I'm thinking about it is if we find a ton of loot that we want to keep and we don't have the space for it, then we'll set up another portal. But until then, it's time to get geared up. We're going to basically go over the same premise that we had last time for the mansion, which means just a few basic necessities. I'm going to use netherrack as a building block again because it's super easy to break. And speaking of blocks, of course we can't forget to bring wool. Which also reminds me that we need to build a barn for our animals and some actual pens that aren't dug into the ground. Ooh, I'm sorry, sheep. And that is our ender chest full already. Great. Well, I guess I can take these blocks out and we'll replace it with a stack of food. Room for some more torches. And we'll probably need a couple of night vision potions. A couple. Right. Now, I have never taken on an ancient city before, so I think I'm as prepared as I can be at this point. But I guess we'll find out sooner or later. Now it's off to actually find one. I was thinking about it and I did forget to grab my netherite hoe and these enderpearls. Now it's time to go and find that one place that I think there might be a deep dark or an ancient city. I found this like gigantic cave while I was exploring a while ago, took a screenshot of it, I figured I'd come back, and that's where we're headed off to now. So it was super early in the morning whenever I actually recorded this footage, and I didn't want to do a voiceover because A, I had some really bad morning voice and I couldn't really talk, and B, there are still tons of people sleeping, so I didn't want to wake people up. And that's why you're getting this post-editing coda doing a voiceover now. I was right about my hunch of there being a deep dark in this area, but sadly there was no ancient city. I was still able to get like the new achievements, so I figured I'd show you all those, and I did accidentally trigger a warden, but he was kind of buggy, so he didn't actually despawn, and I just decided to give up on waiting for him and go find another deep dark. Well, that was the only spot that I had thought a deep dark biome would have been, and I was right, but there was no ancient city. And I don't want to spend a ton of time walking around the world and just guessing at where an ancient city is going to be. So I loaded a copy of this world into a like creative copy test basically and used the locate biome locate structure feature and actually found one. So we're going to go to that right now. And fastest way to get there is going to be through the nether. Now while I would have liked to find one without having to cheat and look one up, this is going to save me a lot of time in the long run. Okay, we have our tunnel dug, and now it's time to see what's on the other side. And, oh, a dark oak forest. Oh, I bet you this is really close to that mansion that we were just at. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the mansion is just a couple hundred blocks over in that direction. That's pretty cool. Alright, now how are we going to get down? I guess we could just dig a tunnel. I don't know what direction we should go in, though. You know, let's just, we'll go and figure it out. Ooh. 
This might be inside of a lush cave. There's the cave. I don't see any ancient city yet. Oh, this reminds me. We need pet axolotls. Oop. That's Skulk. And I think that is ancient city. Oh boy. We are like right in the middle. Is that? Yeah, that's the portal right there. We probably could have come down at a better spot. Okay, I'm going to dig this way and see if we can like loop back around and like actually get to the bottom where we're not in the middle of the entire city. Nope, we are still in the middle. Oh no. Is that that's strike one, huh? Oh. We are still like in the middle of the city. I think if I turn directions and go like that way, we might be okay. Oh, there's a shrieker. Uh, okay, good. I do have my wall on me. Hello, Mr. Skulk Sensor. Okay. Hopefully we're fine. Oh, there's another one. Are you gonna scream? He's gonna scream at me. Oh, maybe not. Okay. That's good to know. I really should have brought shears. Now, is this one gonna scream? No. Okay. Maybe they don't scream when you mine them. That's good to know. Oh. Okay. I don't see any shriekers. Oh, I should have brought an anvil. That would have been smart. Once we get switch sneak, we'll probably just run and hide and come back later when we can fly away. Oh. I see part of the ancient city. Oh. Our first chest. Oh boy. Okay. I'm gonna go back this way. Because I think, I think we're safe here. We can... Yeah, we can walk around okay. But, oh, Does the lush cave go into the ancient city? Oh, that's gonna look really cool. Oh man, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I've got this portal built. I'm gonna take down the coordinates and go to the top of the nether where the other one is and change the portal. And now we're linked. Nope, I did not destroy this portal. Okay. Destroy you. Okay, safe and sound. Now let's see if these portals connect. Awesome, they do. All right. So this will be our like getaway, basically. If we get chased by the warden, hopefully we can make it back to this spot and, you know, travel to another dimension. Hopefully he can't follow us. But that also means we should probably like warden proof our entrance here. This little cave that we got. I think he's three blocks tall, so anything like that should be able to, you know, help us stay safe. But now that we got an escape route planned out, I think it's time that we start actually exploring the city, which I'm really excited for. And I really hope that we find um, at least one Swift Sneak 3. That'd be nice. I know there's a chance that you don't get any, which I hope we're not that unlucky, but you never know. Grab a few extra night vision potions... Okay, I think that's good for now. We have a water bucket. Yep. All right. I'm getting the feeling that I probably should have brought more wool than what I have, but I'm hoping that it's enough and we won't run out. If we do, I mean, we have a safe and easy way to get back to our base. So hopefully we don't run out, but you never know. And first off, this chest here is guarded by a shrieker and a skulk sensor. So I'm going to go over Ooh, two shriekers. Oh boy. And no one else around. You should be fine. You should be fine. Any others? I guess we'll see. Oh boy. How did he see that? I'm not even going to risk getting rid of these ones. I'm just going to go for the chest. Okay. Just to be safe. Okay. That'll be good. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Right off the bat, first book that we get is Swift Sneak. Are you serious? Some iron leggings, skulk. Wow. The first... Ugh. Ugh, ignore that. The first chest that we open up, we get Swift Sneak 3. That's literally 
all that we came down here for was for one enchantment and we got it on our first chest. Um, I think we might stay for a little bit longer. That's some pretty good luck. Hopefully we don't end up regretting that. Oh boy. Probably should have broke that one first. What is that, two strikes now? Okay. One more, and I'm running. See, this is where I'm thinking we should have brought an anvil, because now we have the enchantment. It would have been very convenient to actually put it on our pants and use it. But whatever, maybe we'll find... Oh boy. Maybe we'll actually find enough iron in here to make an anvil. But you need a lot of iron for that, so I don't know. That looks really cool. One of these days, I do actually want to try and kill the warden if we can. Like, I don't want to cheese it or anything like that. I want to just, you know, run from it, try and... Oh, is that diamonds? That is. Okay. But, you know, like a non-cheesy way of killing it, because I think it'd be cool to get the warden head. Yeah, I don't see any shriekers, so I'm going to try and take... Yep, okay. I'm going to try and take these guys out. Why are there so many of them? Ooh, disc fragments. Nice. Candles. actually haven't made a single candle in this world. We should do that soon. They're really nice decoration blocks. Okay, I might regret opening this chest. I don't see anything. I think we're okay. But, yeah. Okay, we're good. Ooh, and echo shards. We, those will actually be useful since um, this isn't a hardcore world. And we can actually die and not worry about it. Not saying that we die very frequently, but it has happened. Oh, wow. There are so many diamonds down here. I wonder if axolotls can spawn in these pools, since they're technically like overlapping biomes. I don't know. This might be the coolest ancient city I've ever seen. I don't think I've seen one interlapped with a lush caves biome. This is really cool. It's very like atmospheric. I don't know how to describe it. Feels like it shouldn't be like this bright and vibrant down here, but it is. Oh, there was a shrieker somewhere. Is that three? God, I hope so. Oh, there it is. A little punk. Is there two of them? I think that's two. Okay, I'm just gonna go this way. I don't know which looks cooler. This place with the night vision or without it. Hmm. That's a tough one. Okay, now this is where I might get a little risky. Because... I want to remove these so I can actually go into the middle here, but I feel like no matter what I do, I'm going to trigger one, and I don't think I have any more strikes left. Ah, uh, shoot. Is that the last one? Oh, that was the last one. That was the last one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, that happened. Talk about heart attacks. Oh. Okay, it's been a couple minutes, and I don't see him anywhere, and I don't hear him either. So I think we might be okay. Famous last words, but I also noticed a chest over there that I'm going to go get real quick. Okay, let's see if that warden's still over there. I've never, like, explored the middle room of an ancient city. I've only seen it in like YouTube videos, so I really want to get rid of that shrieker so I can actually see what's inside without freaking out. Hey, buddy. Okay, we're fine. Okay, front door time. So I know you're supposed to be able to open it. Is this even the front door? I know you're supposed to be able to open it with like eating or something like that, but I know it's really buggy or it doesn't always work. That's so weird seeing grass. I think it's really cool that they implemented this. I don't know, it doesn't really have that big of a purpose, but it's still something like unique that you don't, you don't, you never really think about seeing it in Minecraft. There is a lot of free redstone here though. Okay, we gotta shoot the target. Nope. Oh, maybe? Did something happen? Oh, yeah, it did. Okay. Well, that was that. God, this is so dangerous. Mm, there's one more. Okay. That's a warden. That's a warden. That's a warden. Goodbye. God, these ender pearls really came in clutch. I think he just went back down. So that's not that hard. 
We just gotta be a little more careful. Okay. Yep, we're fine. Another one. Nice. Um, we really could just leave right now. But honestly, there's no point. I'm having a lot of fun. As uh, nerve-wracking as this is. We can stay here for a bit longer. I think we're good. Another one. Well, now if we wanted to, we could have three different pairs of Swift Sneak Pants. Might be a little overkill. I really should have brought an anvil. Wow. That... That is a really good hoe. I think I want to get enough Echo Shards to get a Recovery Compass. By the time we find two more Echo Shards, which I believe you need eight, but by the time we find another one, we might be out of wool or like our inventory might be too full, but I guess we'll see. I'm a pro. I don't know what we'll use all of these. Wow, there is so much more deep dark. Anyway, I don't know what we'll use all of these sensors for, but I think they look cool looking. And I know you can use them for something, so. Ah, poop. Nope, that's a warden. That's a warden. Okay, that way. We're going that way. Probably should have been a little more careful. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. So harmless. I'm just gonna stay up here for now. Oh no, that's another one. Is it gonna spawn two? Shoot. Okay. We're going over there. That warden went down. Oh my gosh. That could have been way worse. I will admit we are getting a little bit reckless. Mm -hmm. Hello. Am I going to risk it to run faster? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm a very patient person, if you couldn't tell. Um, We'll get those later. Protection? Can you only get pants in these? I've gotten so many pants. Oh, and another swift sneak. All right. Those diamonds are really tempting. And... What is that, five now? Yeah, I think I'm gonna get them. All that for two diamonds. Now that we're back at home, we can take a look at all the loot that we got from the ancient city. Which is... All of this. We did leave behind a lot of diamond hoes and a lot of diamond leggings, but we pretty much only found leggings or diamond hoes. In total, we got five Swift Sneak 3 books and six Enchanted Golden Apples, which is really cool. We ended up snagging enough music disc fragments for, I believe, two discs and enough echo shards for, I think, two compasses. We got all the skulk blocks and, of course, the most important thing, we got 25 diamond ores. All in all, I'd like to say that was a pretty successful trip to the ancient city and not bad for my first time. We did trigger the warden on a couple of occasions, but we got away using ender pearls and managed to leave the ancient city without a scratch on us. That's not all that I had in mind for today's episode. I do want to try and get a build in today because would it really be a Coda episode without having a build? No, I don't think so. But today we're going to build something, I think, out back here. I haven't like actually put a lot of thought into this, maybe over there, but who knows? We're going to build something, and you're going to see what that is in just a moment. So today's build, I'm going to need some special materials. Okay, there's one. Now I need a chicken. Thank you for your sacrifice. Now, what am I going to use this book and quill for? Well, recently, we've been getting a lot of comments on videos, and I figured it'd be a good time to start doing a comment of the day section, which most of you are probably familiar with. But from now on, we are going to take a comment from every episode, and I'm going to start with the first five in today's episode and catch up for those five episodes. Meaning next episode, if you leave a comment on this episode, your comment might get read in that episode. But I don't want to just have a book sitting in a chest somewhere. I want there to be an actual build that's somewhat special that we kind of go to. It's like the area for doing the comments. You know, it's like an, a daily thing in our episodes. So that's what we're going to build around this area. Now, also, I did forget one more thing. And that is this book. The book. Now, this book is something I've had for a while in this world. 
probably since like day 100 or something like that. And it is now day 635. So I've had this book for a long time. Now, what is in the book? You might be wondering. Well, it's our to-do list. Basically, everything that I want to do in this world, and then some, is written down here with technical builds, farms that we could do, and builds that we can do. So this book, along with the comment of the day book, will be placed in this special build that we're going to be doing today. And that build is going to be something of like a podium or like a gazebo type of thing that we're going to do right here. So without any further delay, let's hop into some building. Also, I have done zero prep work for this build. I've only kind of thought of like a concept that I want and somewhat a build palette. I'm just letting you know now, I have no idea what I'm doing. I do know that I want to try and connect this pathway that we have going across like this little cliff face here and bring it up to the build itself, which I kind of want it to be like an angled piece, like from over here, you see certain angles of it. And then from like around the corner, you see more angles of it. And then while you're actually in it, I want it to be looking back towards like the base and then, you know, the world and stuff that we create. And the way I'm envisioning this build is kind of expanding eventually into some sort of like a trophy room or a trophy hall or something. Oh, by the way, I put the Swift sneak on my pants. I couldn't help myself. But yeah, eventually I think it'll transform itself into somewhat of a treasure room, maybe out back here or somewhere underneath or something. We'll see. But for now, I want it to be sort of like a circular build in generally this area. And I want it to be like sort of an artistic way of walking up and seeing it in the view as you're you know going up the path. And like, I want it to be just a whole like set piece of art, basically. In terms of palette, I want the foundation to be more of like stone brick. Same with the pillars. We might change that later. Oh, that reminds me. We kind of need some stone. So now I have the platform in and I like it. I like the way it sits. I like where it's sitting. I think the next step is to build up the columns that are, you know, going to hold the roof on and then actually put the roof up. And you can see, I was talking about expanding earlier. We could probably expand somewhere like in that direction into this cliff face a bit and then probably have our walkway come around. And um, that might be our entrance right there. And then also I'm thinking the podiums that we set our books on will be here and right there. That way we have kind of a nice view. I mean, we might have to trim down the hill a little bit, but that way we kind of have a nice view of like the scenery, the sky and stuff. And then um, here, if we do carve some space out for like a trophy hall, that's perfectly fine. We could do that. And then this way will be the entrance. Okay, I got the columns put in and I think I like this design. But it is subject to change when I put the outer columns in. But as you see, we have four like interior columns basically. And then these exterior ones, I kind of want to be a little bit lower. But in between like this space here and this space here, it's going to be completely open. So it'll really just be, um, I guess it'll be easier to show you once the roof is in. But the idea right now is that this set of columns on the inside is going to be different than the set of columns on the outside. But these inside ones, I think the design is going to stay, but we'll see. I like them for now. Interior arches are done. Exterior arches are also done. You can see what I mean with like the shorter looking arch on the outside. We're going to bring the roof out to about halfway. Oh, that's not supposed to be like that. Okay, somehow we're going to connect these two roofs together, or we're going to bring like an overhang over here. And it'll kind of like cover up this roof. But really these arches are meant to be like a decorative um, cardinal direction type of an arch, I guess, if that makes sense. They're really not meant to be part of the main structure. They're kind of just going to be here for decorative purposes. And now I think we're going to move on to doing the roof. Okay, so I fiddled with the dome a little bit. And this is like the third design that I've done. And I think this is the one that's going to stick. It's a lot smaller than the other ones which I'm okay with the, like the bigger domes just look too heavy for this small, you know, like the four columns that we have. So I decided to tone it down a little bit and this smaller dome is what we're left with. I might trim up like the edges right there, but all in all, I believe this is the design we're going to go with. I am currently working on the outline of the roof and I wanted to show you all something. If you quickly left and right click on like a dirt block or something that you can like instant mine with your tool, you can actually replace the block with whatever is in your offhand. 
So I've just been walking around and... Well, yeah, see, there it didn't work, but... If you're quick enough, you can do, like, a quick replacement. And it's something that B-dubs recently showed off, and I thought it was really cool. And I figured I'd give it a try, and it actually works. And it's really a time saver. The dome is now finished. It's not too fancy yet. The, you know, final details aren't really in, but I don't know if I'm going to add too much more to it. I like the way that it's at right now. So I think it might stay like this. I mean, there might be like, we might add a couple of leaves here and there, just, you know, whatever we decide to do for like the build itself. But in terms of other details, I really think that it's going to stay pretty much how it is. Now that we have the dome in place, it's time that we wrap up today's episode. I don't want it to go for too long, so I'm going to save the terraforming and the final details for in between episodes. But before you leave, we've got to go over the comment of the day and this build book. So, code is survival to do. I'm going to slowly thumb through every page, and if anybody has a comment or a suggestion that they want to make on some of the things that I have written down here, please be sure to let me know and I will add it to the book and together we can check everything off of these lists one by one. Now on to the comment of the day. So for episode one, Jake Kelton was my first comment that I got on that episode and technically of YouTube. And he basically just gave me his favorite moments and a couple of suggestions. And I really appreciated that comment. Now episode two, I like that you are trying to explain your process. It kind of bugs me that you keep calling it chaotic. Now, I wasn't sure how I wanted to explain my process. And personally, I thought it was very chaotic, but it sounds like a lot of people understood what I was saying and I'm glad that it got through to a lot more people than I thought it would but always Avril thank you for the comment and I am going to try and stop calling it as chaotic as I thought it was now for episode three build lighthouse it's a very strong argument thank you Andrew Pearson for episode four if you want to make the bee farm smaller you could use observers smile that's what I do from Charlotte Arsand Wemi Wemi I'm sorry if I said that wrong but yes, that is a very simple way that you can simplify the redstone in the back. If anybody is trying to mimic the farm, you could also use observers. And episode 5, we have, first of all, I want to say great video. Second is that I'm so impressed with how much your channel has grown. I saw the first video when you had 17 subscribers, and now you have over 150 from Army Plays. Yeah, we had over 150, and now we have over 500. And at the time that I did the intro of this video, it was around 300. So the channel is growing incredibly fast. And I want to thank each and every one of you viewing this, coming back and seeing the content that we do and we put out and leaving a comment, leaving a like, whatever you do. I really appreciate you all being here. It really warms my heart seeing how much this channel has grown over the two months. And I am very excited to see where it goes. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun exploring that ancient city and building this little thing here, even though it's not done yet. But with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day.